We're here in the heart of the colonial city in downtown Santo Domingo with Chris Porcino. He is the uh, founder of Intellisys. Very interesting IT software company. A lot of you out there probably don't associate the Dominican Republic with IT and software development, but Chris is a great example of another great entrepreneur in Latin America doing some interesting stuff. So Chris, give us the very brief history of how you got Intellisys off the ground. Oh, well, like, I was working in New York City as a software developer, as a lead architect, and I started like sending work back uh, to the Dominican Republic to freelancers. And, and in 2007, we you know, rented an apartment and put uh, three developers in it, and, and then just started from there. And we started like training them, you know, just trying to find out like uh, what uh, training and like what uh, the developers were lacking uh, here in Dominican Republic in order to compete uh, uh, like at the level that like I was uh, working in New York. And then we just started like, you know, making a lot of mistakes uh, in terms of like the hiding uh, of the developers and the training and you know the personality and trying to build like a cool culture it, it was I mean, it all has been about building like a really cool culture so that okay. everybody likes to work in it and you know uh, just getting over it, like different mistakes and you know and then you know fixing one to find the next and fix, fix the next and uh and that was like in 2007 right now like uh we're 43 and uh it's you know 24. Right. So Chris is set up in uh, the city of Santiago, uh, Dominican Republic, with 43. You said yep. 43 staff, uh, and you have uh, your client base is mostly U.S. Uh, yes, it's U.S. and we do have uh, like 30 percent in Canada. Like, uh, yeah, but it's mostly U.S. and uh, uh, mostly like New York. We have clients in New York, uh, Austin, and now we started like working with people in Alabama. Birmingham and also in Washington DC and in Canada we have in Waterloo and in uh, Calgary. So can you tell us a little bit of about who these companies are and what kind of services you're doing? Are you doing Agile or uh, .NET? Or? Uh, yes, um, in terms of like methodologies all we do is Agile uh, methodology. We do uh, mostly Scrum but we also have Lean, uh, Kanban and XP, uh, you know like pure XP. Uh, and in terms of the technology itself uh, and the platforms, like uh, probably 50% is PHP, uh, MySQL, LAMP, and uh, the other is uh, mostly .NET. And we do Java, but on the client side on Android. And we do iOS, uh, HTML5 on uh, you know phone gap and, and like for mobile and, and stuff like that. Uh, and and again, the clients are like you know US and Canada. Okay. Okay, and uh, what is your view on the potential of uh, of the Dominican Republic for IT services, ITO? Okay, um, well, I, I think like right now there is a big challenge uh, that it's, I would say a challenge for any entrepreneur and also the government, which is the education. Uh, based on my experience, and I cannot speak uh, for the whole country, but based on my experience in Santiago, like uh, the the. The universities they're doing a very good job of preparing like the IT staff uh, for the Dominican market. But once you get into like a higher uh, market, like global market, like US and, and Canada, like uh, there is there, there there are some gaps that need to be filled. And and uh, and I think there is a, a a lot of good intentions in part of the government, but in terms of the result, they're still not there. So um, I, I I see that right now that's like our biggest uh, struggle. Uh, I mean, uh, as a, as like as a company, we could have like uh, right now we're only 43 because we cannot find enough people. Like we could have like we have clients to be like double our size, but you know. So one of the things that we've we've always noticed that uh, are an indicator of a fully functioning nearshore market is when the private sector works with the public sector and the pri the public sector listens to the private sector and when the private sector says, look, you need to spend more attention on this yeah. and this and here's your um, gaps. At what level is the Dominican Republic IT BPO community communi communicating to the public sector to say, here's how the policies are that you should look to follow? Uh, I know there's, there was a big initiative in terms of the government, uh, like a uh, cluster so, and we were a member of it. And I think like in the past year, uh, I think it has pulled up a little bit, I mean, at least from the Santiago side. I'm not sure like what they're doing here in the capital. Uh, but like for us in Santiago, uh, we've been, been having uh, greater, and we haven't approached the government, or the government hasn't approached us. However, we have approached local universities, and and, and they've been great. Uh, like uh, the the university, uh, the uh, Kamaima, like they're like 
they've changed like their curriculum a great deal. Like uh, a few years back, like uh, the the graduates that we were getting, they wouldn't be able to pass our test. We had to train them, and now like they're able uh, to pass our test. And 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 it has been changed. That I mean, they talk to us. I, I cannot take credit for that. I know that they do have a great deal of smart people there that they're probably like we have figured out by themselves. But they, you know, they talk to us and they listen to other people. And I think they, they made a lot of changes. And that's something that we're trying to replicate in Santiago with other uh, local universities. Uh, in terms of the government, I think like the, there's a lot of good intention. But in, in Santiago, I don't see uh, I don't see a lot happening. Okay. And uh, and final thought. What, and tell us just in two or three years, what's your vision? Three to five years, what's your vision? Uh, right now, like uh, we see, it and we tend to see ourselves as a training company because we've done so much training with the employee. So uh, I think that's going to be like our our biggest uh, challenge. So like to being able to solve that problem, and in terms of that, like uh, we hope to continue help uh, like U.S. and uh, North American entrepreneurs to uh, implement their ideas. And, and uh, also, like we started, like to not only uh, help them but also invest with them. Uh, actually, uh, the Brooklyn game, which is the fan side uh, for the Brooklyn Nets, uh, like we're we're partner. We're, we're not only like their outsourcing company, but we're also partner uh, with them uh, on on that side. And, and there are a lot of other uh, places where, where we we see ourselves ourselves not only as a outsourcing company but also as a, a partner with with the clients. Okay. Well, Chris, great to see you. I wish you the best, and we'll check in with you in the future. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris.